What is it that God wants? What is it that you want? It would be my hope and my prayer that those two things would be the same. God desires a people who will love him with all of their heart, mind, strength, and soul. And Micah, we read uh, this very question of what is it that the Lord wants, or what shall I come, or with what shall I come before the Lord? And the prophet Micah gives this answer. He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? In the book of James, we find this, that religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to take care of orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. Or as we looked at in Deuteronomy chapter 6, we have the Shema, to hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, strength, and soul. And then added to that we find in Leviticus 19, to love your neighbor as yourself. This is what God wants. Within the biblical account of the people of God in the Old Covenant and the Old Testament, we find that the, what the people wanted often was different from what God wanted. From the very beginning with Adam and Eve, created in the image of God, created for God and to live with God and to love God. But they put themselves at the center of their universe, of their want. And then we find the same when God calls the people who will be his people and who will live in a land that he gives them and that he will be there among them and be their God in that land. But just as Adam and Eve, the people of Israel, desired something else other than what God desired. God had led his people into a land which was to be their land, and a place where they were to be his people. And as his people, God was going to and did dwell among them. And they would serve as a nation of priests in the world, showing others through their love of God, and love of one another, who the one true living God was, the creator of all, through whom all things were created and for whom all things were created. Then we find in Second Chronicles chapter 36, Second Chronicles 36 verse 11, Zedekiah, who was 21 years old, when he began to reign, he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. He did not humble himself before the prophet Jeremiah, who spoke from him, or spoke from the mouth of the Lord. He also rebelled against King Nebuchadnezzar, who had made him swear by God. He stiffened his neck and hardened his heart against turning to the Lord, the God of Israel. And all the leading priests and the people also were exceedingly unfaithful, following all the abominations of the nations. And they polluted the house of the Lord that he had consecrated in Jerusalem. And then we find in verse 15 and following, the, the Lord allows the people to be taken captive by the Babylonians. And the city is destroyed and the temple is destroyed in the vessels of the temple the house of God where God lived with them were taken by the Babylonians the people of God due to apostasy the people of God due to chasing after other gods the people of God due to putting themselves as the God of their own heart had to leave the land had to leave the place of God's presence, the place where God's presence dwelt among them. Due to their desire for other gods, their love of other things more than God himself, they become exiled and become captives in a foreign nation. The Babylonians come in 586 BC they leave the city desolate, and they take God's people away. 
what we find at the end of the book of Chronicles, in chapter uh, 36, verse 22, that God is not done, and God's grace is shown. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in fulfillment of the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he sent a herald throughout all his kingdom, and also declared in a written edict, Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever is among you of all his people, may the Lord his God be with him. Let him go up. A little bit later in the book of Ezra, we read that Cyrus says, Those whom the Spirit of the Lord has stirred, go and rebuild the temple of your God. Go and rebuild a place where God will be among you and you will be with God. In Ezra chapter 1, we find this beginning to unfold and the people of God begin to get stirred to return, to rebuild the house of God. In Ezra chapter 3, we find another man raised up, Ezra. And within, uh, we find uh, another man in chapter 7, rather. We find another man raised up, and his desire uh, is to instruct the people once again in the word of God. So we have in chapter 3 of Ezra, uh, Zerubbabel and Jeshua, who have been encouraged to bring leadership to the rebuilding of the temple and the city. And then in Ezra 7, we have Ezra who has been encouraged and led by the Spirit to institute once again the word of God among the people, that they might be a people who hear God's word and come near or nigh unto God in and through the temple. So God is stirring in the king allowing the people to go. He's stirring up the people and individuals among the people who will return and restore a place for God's presence and restore a hearing of the word of God. And then in Nehemiah, we find God stirring among Nehemiah to go and bring additional leadership and help to the rebuilding of the temple of God. And to build walls, we find this in Nehemiah, to build walls around the city, walls around the people of God that will protect them from temptation, that will protect them from once again wandering away, that will protect them from turning their backs once again on God. that God may be real and active among them, that they might know God's presence, that they might hear God's word, that they might follow God's ways. My dear friends, I do believe that our church needs renewal, that our church needs to once again learn what it is to press into the presence of God, to learn again what it is to love God with all of our heart, mind, strength, and soul. To learn once again what it is to heed, to hear the word of God. To have our relationship with God to be real, relational, and active. To build walls around our heart. Walls around our body. Walls around the church. Not to keep people out but to keep out that which would lead us astray and to invite people in that they might draw close to the presence of God, that they might know God in a profound and real way among a people who, 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 who pursue God with all that they've got. To return to a hunger for this very presence of God. Fincham, in a commentary, writes, reflecting upon the idolatry of Israel. So easy to take a lamb to the altar and yet live in daily disregard of the implied principles. The continual atonement for sin became mere custom. The ritual of religion 
not the reality of relationship, living in the presence of God. The sacrifices were to be a reminder that God was forgiving their sins so that they could live with him and for him. They heeded not the warning of Jeremiah chapter 7. You were coming in and saying, this is a temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, offering their sacrifice and thinking and believing that all was then good. Yet they were not loving God and they were not loving others. We've come to the house of God. We come into the church, the body of Christ, the temple. We come to the altar of Christ. We reflect upon his sacrifice for us around his table. Let us recognize what it is that God wants. Let us recognize what it is that we want. And if there's any discrepancy, let us reorient our hearts once again to the things of God, to his praise and to his glory. Amen.